So in this video I'm going to explain the difference for electric vehicles between a single motor, dual motor, tri-motor, quad motor and all in relation to EVs generally, particularly off-road and particularly in relation to the new Tesla Cybertruck and I'm going to be using a variety of models to do that. But first we've got to understand a bit about some of the fundamental problems vehicle designers face and what a differential is. So the first problem is the differential problem. Now this is not a differential, it's simply one shaft driving another shaft. But take a look at these two marks on the wheel. So I moved the vehicle forwards, they roll in unison as you can see, and then I turn this and both wheels turn at exactly the same speed. Now this is great if you're just going to go backwards and forwards, but going around a the corner there's a problem. Watch what happens. As I go around a corner, both wheels still turn at the same speed. This one should go faster because it's describing a greater arc than the inside wheel, but it can't. So what happens is this wheel has to skid, as you can see. So that's not ideal. Now, to solve the problem, we have something called a differential, which is here. Now, we're going to go over the cogs and so forth. It doesn't really make any difference. But um, again, if I turn this, you can see that both wheels turn in unison. And if I push it along like that you can see again both wheels turn in unison again we've got two wheels turning but here's the difference if i now turn it in a corner watch what happens see that the outside wheel is able to turn at a different speed relative to the inside wheel now that's great because when you go around a corner and you have your defense you're able to turn both wheels yet the outside wheel can speed up and in a car if that doesn't happen then that wheel will scuff and skid over the ground the car will just want to describe a wider arc you use more fuel you damage your drive line and uh, generally it's it's a problem which is why the differential is just so good but there's a significant problem with the differential going to come to in a moment so this is our first model and it's got one motor driving a differential drive driving two wheels. I start it up and you can see that both wheels are being driven. If I slow down one wheel, provide some resistance, the other wheel just spins and same the other way. Now this is an individual wheel drive vehicle. We've got one motor here which drives that wheel and another motor which drives that wheel. And this controller allows me to turn one wheel or the other or both in unison as you can see. So let's talk about the problem with differentials. We'll start the model up and the motor's turning both wheels. That's because there's equal resistance to this wheel and that wheel. But if I start to put a bit of resistance on this wheel, that one just spins freely. Now we're going to put the vehicle on a ramp and see what happens. So on the flat, no problem at all gets to the ramp. This wheel is now in the air and there's very little resistance to it. So what happens is that the differential will split torque or turning force equally between the left and the right wheels. This wheel has very little resistance so needs very little torque to turn and that's as much torque as this partner wheel gets and the vehicle will be going nowhere. That is the problem with differentials for off-road and there's a lot of work going into it of locking diffs, LSDs and brake traction control and the like. Now there's many ways to solve this problem and one way is to use a locking differential. So the way we're going to do that is to engage that cog here and that cog over there and that will force this wheel to turn at the same speed as that wheel. And if we try that now, then I put some resistance on here and you can hear the motor start to strain. And no longer will one wheel just spin uselessly. So let's give that a shot and see how it works. And the vehicle climbs up the ramp with no problem at all. So that is a locked differential and one solution to the off-road problem where one wheel spins uselessly. So let's take a look at the second model now, individual wheel drive. So we can move it forwards and backwards and I can simply do that. And of course, I can just do it with one wheel, but if I do it with the other wheel, that's got no traction so it doesn't go anywhere. And therefore I've kind of got, in many ways, the best of both worlds. I can speed up this wheel, slow it down to go around a corner, and if I get into a situation off-road, I can send lots of torque to one wheel and none to that wheel, so I can vary how much turning force goes to each wheel. However, there are disadvantages of IWD, and we'll get to them in a moment. Now there's another engineering problem to solve, and that is the fact that when a vehicle goes around the corner, the front axle travels faster than the rear axle. And if you've got a solid bind between the two, well, you're going to cause what's called transmission bind up or transmission wind up. And I've got a separate video where I explain that, but let me show you the problem. Look at these four points here. 
as I move the vehicle forwards, this wheel here has gone the quickest, so it has done one complete rotation, and this rear wheel is going second quickest, so it's almost done a rotation. And if we keep going round, then finally this wheel starts to come round, and then we've got that wheel starting um, to finally to come round at the end. So in effect, the back axle is travelling slower than the front axle, and we've got to find some way to drive both axles, yet actually allow them to move at different speeds. And the solution, as you may expect is another differential or maybe a clutch or something like that but something in the middle which allows drive to go to the rear wheels and to the front wheels yet also allow those two axles to rotate at different speeds. Now let's take a look at this TRX4 model. It's got one motor and it drives through the front prop shaft this differential and that drives the front wheels rear prop shaft that differential drives the rear wheels and it has as it just said differentials so when we do this with it What's happening there is exactly the same as with the other differentials. This wheel here doesn't take much turning resistance, so the amount of force required to turn that wheel is how much that wheel will get, and the same on the back axle like that. Now, we can go back and we can lock the differentials, and then the vehicle will climb, as you can see. But there's another solution as well. If we come back here, and what we can do is increase the turning resistance on this wheel, which will of course mean that that wheel will get more turning force. So if I take this block of wood and place it on top like that, and then I'm just going to press my finger down. You can see that the vehicle moves forwards. I'll just do that again and get it cross axle. Place a block of wood on the top. Just going to press my finger down and the vehicle moves forwards. Now that is in effect brake traction control working, ABS brake traction control. What it does, it looks for a difference in wheel speed across two wheels. So when this wheel is spinning quicker than that wheel, the computers will use the brakes, apply the brakes to that wheel, create more resistance, and that in effect requires more resistance to turn that wheel. This wheel gets more, more turning force and the vehicle can move onwards. Here's a summary of the engineering challenges which all vehicles need to solve, road going included, but especially off-road vehicles. First one is that when the vehicle goes around the corner, the outside wheel will travel further than the inside wheel, yet you've got to find some way of driving them both. The second one is that, again, when the vehicle goes around a corner, the front axle travels faster than the rear axle, so in the case of a four-wheel drive, an all-wheel drive, you've got to find some way of driving them both, but again, at different speeds. Now, the common solution to that has been the differential, which you've seen has got problems when one wheel loses traction relative to the other one. Let's see how electric vehicles solve these engineering challenges. There's a few terms I want to clear up. The first one is four by four, which means four wheels and four driven, but it's got a connotation of off-road capability. For example, the Jeep Wrangler, the Land Rover Defender. That's in contrast to AWD or all wheel drive, which means that all wheels are driven, but the connotation there is on-road capability. For example, the Audi RS3, Subaru WRX. Then we've got rear wheel drive, so driving the rear wheels only, that's a four by two, four wheels two driven, example, MX-5 Miata. FWD, front wheel drive, four by two again, four wheels two driven, and that's the Toyota Corolla. Now, to make things confusing, all four by fours are technically all wheel drive, but it's that connotation there. Um, and some four by fours have an all wheel drive mode. So the Land Rover Defender can actually drive all four wheels all the time. With the Jeep Wrangler, you've got to put it into two wheel drive on high traction surfaces like um, pavement. So that clears up those definitions. Now, let's talk about the differences between um, an ICE or internal combustion engine, petrol and diesel drivetrain and electric. So this is what 4x4s or off-road vehicles typically use. We've got an engine in blue, we've got a transfer case driving a prop shaft to the rear, differential at the back, differential at the front. That's the way that works. Now the extreme with EVs is IWD or individual wheel drive. We've got a battery, we've got a motor at each wheel which individually powers each wheel and then the torque and the speed is varied according to what the car is doing. So that's your IWD. Now a simple version for an EV would simply be to be more or less take um, combined wheel drive, just have a battery, a motor and in this case you drive the rear axle via differential, it could be the front axle. 
For a dual motor, this is where things start to get different because you've got the battery again, we've got motor at the front, motor at the back, and the differentials, but we've got in effect a software control between the two to say how much torque and speed and power the front motor gets relative to the rear as opposed to physical prop shafts and clutches. And that's where EVs start to really become different from conventional wheel drive vehicles. And then we've got the tri-motor, which is a mix of both. So at the front, we've got one motor going via differential to the front and then at the back we've got individual wheel drive and that's your tri-motor. Now for the Cybertruck that's what the rear drive looks like um, so motor at the back differential the all-wheel drive one again one battery motor at the front motor at the rear and it's also got cross axle locking differentials front and rear and the cyber beast is individual wheel drive on the rear and it's got a cross axle, cross -axle locking diff um, on the front. Now, let's talk about the advantages of the dual motor setup um, versus the conventional wheel drive with an ICE vehicle. So the first one is simplicity, right? With the conventional wheel drive, you've got a transfer case, you've got clutches, you've got all sorts of complicated things in here. With the EV, it's far simpler from a mechanical perspective, but not from a software perspective. It's also more efficient. You just don't have all those cogs going around, so that's a huge um, boon. And you get really precise torque front and rear. You can instantly and quickly vary how much torque and power the front axle gets versus the rear, shut it off in and out. This, it, you, you can vary the torque front and rear, but not quite as quickly and easily as, as efficiently. And packaging and space, you know, there's just more room. You don't have the transfer case, you don't have the prop shafts going front and rear, so that's an advantage as well. Now, on the conventional wheel, wheel side, it is simpler. The software engineering required to do that is, is complex. Um, with this, there's much less because you just prop shafts, right? Although there is some software engineering to say how much torque goes front and rear if you don't lock, lock that sensitive out completely. Now, the other advantage here, and this is a big one, uh, you can own, if you've got two motors here, you, you can only really get the benefit of both motors if all four wheels have some form of traction. Whereas here you can have just one wheel on the ground and then all of that power torque can go to that one wheel and still keep moving you forward and that's important off-road. So let's talk about why IWD is so great, individual wheel drive, the pros and cons. So now we can also get precision torque to each wheel, not just to each axle now, but also to each individual wheel. We can speed this motor up, slow that motor down, we can even reverse them, and, and that's fantastic. We can also do in-motor traction control. So instead of needing, um, with the conventional wheel drive, to have a wheel speed sensor which goes around, we can actually just vary it directly inside the motor, and that is so much better and quicker than um, doing off-wheel off speeds. Cornering, we can actually slow down wheels going around the corner, speed the others up, you can't really do that effectively in the differential. Again, so much quicker and efficient and precise. And we've got software, so we could do a software differential lot, we could have an open differential, we could have all sorts of things, it's just a software program. And we could do skid steer, speed those wheel, wheels up, reverse those, and you can then skid steer. Now the disadvantages, here we get um, into the problems because each motor is only about a quarter of the power and we'll come on to a potential solution for that in a moment. But um, you can, again, if you've got 100% of the power, um, you're only putting 25% to each wheel. So if only one wheel's got traction, that could be an issue. And it is reactive. Um, if you've got a solid lock, locked axle here, um, then you know there's no need for, for anything to be detected and reacted. It's just gonna work for you when you're doing a rocky climb. This will always be a little bit reactive. And there's a lot of software complexity in this yet, and I don't think we've quite figured it out. It's also expensive and it has to be designed absolutely right from a software perspective. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. So here's a potential solution to IWD. So um, if we want to get more than more power to one wheel, we could just put in a lock between each motor and then just have both motors drive the one wheel and you could do that with a clutch or something similar. And similarly, if we want to just lock out that rear axle completely, well, why don't we do that? And then both, we've got half the um, power of the vehicle in total going to one axle, which is good. And that, that's something you wouldn't get with IWD. Personally, I would not size each of these motors at 25%, I'd size them at at least 30, 40% um, for an off-road vehicle for this purpose. Now I want to talk about a significant risk with all vehicles and also with EVs on hills in an off-road situation and it's this. 
When um, a vehicle brakes, we get a load shift to the front um, and therefore we get more grip on the front wheels, less on the back. And that's why the brakes are biased to the front. So we can demonstrate that here with this car, we've got equal weight and on um, all the wheels. When it brakes, we get a load transfer. You can kind of think of it as a weight transfer to the front and off the rear. And that means we've got more grip on the front axle, less on the rear axle. And therefore the brakes are designed to do more braking force to the front than to the rear. And this is an example of an Astra stopping. You can see the driver's jammed on the brakes, front wheels have locked, rear wheels are rotating. And here's an example of an 80 series. So at the front, we've got the center differential unlocked, the driver's jammed on the brakes. You can see that the front wheels have actually locked completely, the rear wheels are rotating. So we've got them to lock the center diff and do it again. And you can see that all four wheels have locked. Now, why is that the case? Because the center differential here is locked and the front axle, and this is important, the front axle must turn at the same speed as the rear axle. That's really important for what's coming. Whereas if the center diff unlocked, we can lock the front axle and the rear can still keep going. All right, so this is, this is um, the problem. On the flat, we've got equal weight, we'll just call it 50-50, front and rear. Um, and we go onto a hill and of course, because um, it's now on an incline, we've got more weight on the rear and less on the front. And that means we've got much more grip on the rear tires and much less grip on the front tires. And this is where the problem comes in. So we're up on our hill and we've got the brake bias to the front. We've got limited weight on the front wheels and we've got the center differential unlocked. And in software cases, let's say that we haven't made some form of software lock so that the front axle has to turn the same as the rear. Well, here's what happens. You come to a halt, you put your foot on the brakes, you send a lot of braking force to the front axle, which doesn't have much grip, and not very much to the rear axle, which does have a lot of grip, and you can actually slide down the hill. And people have been killed doing this, driving on hills without having their center diff unlocked. And it is a real significant problem and a risk. And it will happen with EVs if there is not some form of mitigation control for it, maybe some form of software lock in it, I don't know, but I hope that EV manufacturers understand this because it is a definite risk. So, summarize then, um, AWD road going four wheel drive, four by four is off road, um, AWD in effect, EVs can have one, two, three or four motors. And the engineering challenges for all vehicles are driving each wheel at different speeds around the corner and the front and rear axles around the corner. And in off-road vehicles and performance vehicles, figuring out exactly how much torque or turning force each wheel is at any given time and delivering it. And that, that's quite a challenge. And, and for two to four motors, you can think of things as software replacing prop shaft, which is quite exciting. So. IWD and these EV powertrains will be amazing, but only if they are calibrated correctly. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please use the comments and thank you for watching.